Jesus is his name And I'm all about him I live to bring him praise He is the way and the truth and the life God is three in one Reigning undefeated Our God is overcome Jesus Jesus What's up God Go family? Hope y'all having an awesome day I am pumped up and excited To share with you a message that as the title says, what an awesome opportunity we have before us. During this time of the coronavirus, how in the world could we have an awesome opportunity before us? What about this time? Is there any kind of awesome opportunity there? Because it's hard in a time like this to see good. But as we talked about the other day, um, how in Romans 8.28, God says that he's working all things for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So God is always working things for good. He's working behind the scenes of our lives in ways that we may never see or realize. God's hand is always at work. And it's so crazy, even in a time like this, where so much bad is going on, so much bad is on the media, on the news, and it can cause us to be so fearful. But God is working things for good, not only in our lives, but the world around us. He's always working things for good. So I just want to encourage you today in that. And also talk a little more on the, the meditation Monday that the verses um, put up Monday. The Psalms 4610, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Luke 516, but Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. I want to hit on these verses real quick. And talk about this awesome opportunity that you're probably wondering what in the world is he talking about an awesome opportunity with all this stuff going around about the coronavirus and quarantines and no toilet paper and um, just a lot of bad, tough stuff going on. Well, as these verses uh, show it, and especially in Luke 5, 16, Jesus shows us an example and Jesus does something that doesn't make a lot of sense for us because in our minds, in our lives to be successful, we have to stay busy in our minds. And the world tells us to be successful. We have to always be on the go, always be grinding, always be working hard and getting after it. Never take time to slow down because that means you're weak. That means you're not doing the work you should be doing to be successful. Well, Jesus shows us a different perspective on what success looks like and, and how to live a, a successful life in God's terms. And it's a simple, so simple, little, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine words. This verse just gives us such a great example of how Jesus lived his life on this earth, especially during the time of his ministry when he was so busy all the time and you look at our lives, even more so before this, we have so many things going on. We have to-do lists. We have distractions like sports and TV and our phones are constantly going off with different notifications. We have places to be, people to see. Everything in the world is grabbing for our attention. And we're, we live such busy, fast lives that it's hard to take time to slow down and Right here, Jesus is in the, the middle of his ministry, at the more at the beginning stages at Luke 5. And he's waited 30 years for this. You would think he'd be off and running, right? Like he would be getting after it. Because remember, in our terms, what the world tells us, to be successful and for Jesus to have a successful ministry, he has to go, go, go and not stop and see as many people, heal as many people as he can and do all these amazing things as much as he can. To have a successful ministry. That's not true. It's not true. The world's terms of success is wrong. It's not. It's completely different from God's terms of success. To be successful in God's terms. Is to be obedient. To follow God's will. And God's will. As Jesus shows us in this example. It says. But Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. Often. Jesus withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. Not just here and there. When he felt like it. Not just a couple times out of the blue, but often means many times 
Jesus withdrew. He withdrew from the crowds, from the busyness of life, from all the people grabbing for his attention and trying to get to him. As soon as they realized like he's the Messiah, he's the guy, he's the son of God. He withdrew often to the wilderness where there was no one, no distractions, no nothing, but just God's creation for prayer. For prayer with the Father. And that kind of hit me, especially in this time, like we're in a wilderness of our own right now. And like we could see this as such a bad thing. We got to be in the house. We can't go places, see people. We don't have sports on TV. So that really stinks. At first, that really stunk for me because I would, my morning routine is, especially during uh, basketball season, is I watch the Celtics highlights, Boston Celtics, and I watch their full game highlights because I didn't catch the game the night before. I'm usually busy. Watch the highlights in the morning while I'm eating my oatmeal. And that's my morning routine. Then I go into my quiet time. But usually during this time of year, when I'm watching those highlights, it really hinders my quiet time with the Lord. It really hinders the time I spend praying and reading my Bible in the morning, talking to God. And as soon as the NBA decided no more basketball right now, I had no more highlights to watch. So that distraction was just cut right out of my life. And then I started realizing, like, I don't have anything else to do. It forced me to get in, get in my Bible and spend more intentional time with God. And that time in my Bible, with distraction-free, just plenty of time to do it. Less work in my life to do. This past week especially, it's been, like, transforming, like... I can't even explain to you that simple time of stepping back and not necessarily getting work done or not getting things done, which we see as the key to success, but stepping back and doing nothing, stepping back and doing nothing, but reading God's word and, and spending time in prayer with God, talking to the father. That time has just opened up my eyes to not only see his word in a bigger light, but his word and seeing like how powerful he is through his word and coming to a deeper knowledge of him like in psalms forty six ten, be still and know that i am god that has made so much more sense through this time as i've learned jesus's example for us often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer he withdrew from all distractions and all things going on to stop and be still to know that the Father is the Father, that God is God. And to just rest in that and sit in that for a moment. I'm just going to let you think about it. I want you to be still right now and just think about that for a second. Okay, that's all the time I'm going to give because I don't want to take too much of your time. I'll let you do that on your own as I challenge you to do that in your own personal quiet time. But just be still and know that I am God. And it's hard in our lives with all the many things going through our minds, all the things grabbing for our attention, all the things in our lives that are constantly going, notifications coming up on our phone. It's hard to be still. And I've noticed these past couple months of my life, I've been so busy working on a different schedule that when I've tried to be still, my mind is still just racing. When I try to be still, I, it's hard. It's hard to sit back and stop when you're go, go, go all the time. That is why Jesus shows us this example right here and, and just puts it to action exactly what we should do. And just think if Jesus would withdraw often to go to the wilderness and, for prayer with the Father, Think it, th Jesus did this. How even more so do we need this? The Son of God did this. Then Jordan definitely needs this. The Son of God did this. Then you definitely need to do this. Even more so than Jesus. Because he had things together. He lived a perfect life. But he still took time often to withdraw to the wilderness where nothing was going on around him, where he was alone, where he could be still before God. To just know that he is God. 
to just know that he's good, to just know the simple truth that's been going through my mind like crazy lately is that it's not about me. It's not about what I do. It's all about God. It's all about who he is and what he does. For there's nothing I can accomplish that can amount to anything in this world. Only God can do anything in my life. The only good part about me is God. And that is just like completely blowing my mind in so many ways. And we're going to talk about that more next week as we dig into some more good God gold. But that simple statement right there, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Like there's no better way we can spend our time. And we've got so much free time right now to do it. So what is this awesome opportunity to take the time that we've been given away from distractions, away from sports and entertainment and away from all the craziness of our normal lives of going places and seeing people that this free time that we have right now, this extra time that we have is such an awesome opportunity for us that God has given us in the midst of what a trial this is. God has worked through this time for good for our good and for the good of the nations and for his name to be exalted in the earth. God has worked through this time behind the scenes to allow us to go through this and the good in it right now. The One of the big things that I've been seeing lately is having this quiet time with God to not have all these distractions and things going on around us, but to be able to withdraw in this wilderness that we're in right now of quietness distraction free and just go to God in prayer to speak to the father to listen to the father just as Jesus set the example for us as he withdrew to the wilderness for prayer to be still and know that he is God to be still and and come to a deeper understanding of who he is there's nothing I'm telling you right now as I've witnessed this and experienced this in my own life this past week. There is nothing better in this life than being still and growing in our understanding of who God is. That it has changed even in a week of, of this so far, maybe a week and a half. It's changed so many areas of my life where I've been able throughout my day to take a step back from getting too caught up in, in the busyness and work that's still going on to take a step back to remember what me and God discussed, what God discussed with me through his word and through prayer in that morning time or whatever time it is for you. And to just take a couple of deep breaths and be still and just get refocused and recentered on the fact that it is God is God. We're not capable of anything, but God, only through him, can his goodness be spread and exalted among the earth. And that is what it's all about. He makes our steps straight. There's so many things that God works and his hand does in our life. And if we don't take time to, to step aside from the busyness and all our cares and desires in this world, to step aside from that and, and spend time with God, intentionally seeking after him, realizing this is what it's all about. It's all about him. Being still and know that I am God. So I challenge you today to take up this awesome opportunity that we've been given in this time and to grow. To use this time you've been giving to reset your priorities on what really matters and grow with God. To be still and know that he is God. To withdraw in this wilderness that we're in right now. And just spend time in prayer with God. Not just speaking. Even more so listening. Now I want you to take a couple deep breaths with me. Alright. The challenge is up to you now. We've got an awesome opportunity in front of us to step away into the wilderness God has allowed us to, to be in right now and step into the good that he's working in our lives behind the scenes and to be still and know that he is God. 
don't waste this opportunity because it's awesome. And the results of it are even more awesome. I don't want you to miss that because it's going to only get gooder and gooder from here. So I hope this God Gold encourages you today. Hope it, it moves you and, and strengthens your faith. And just hope you have an awesome day. And I'm praying for for you and praying for all the people in the world right now going through the coronavirus and all the effects from it. And I challenge you also to pray, pray, pray for everyone going through this time that is in need in any kind of way, whether from the coronavirus or the effects from it that are going on around us. Um, I just challenge you to pray for others and um, be still, withdraw often, and know that God is God. See you guys. Don't miss this opportunity. Let me tell you about him. Jesus is his name. And I'm all about him. I live to bring him praise. He is the way and the truth and the life. God is three in one. Reigning undefeated. Our God is overcome. Jesus. Jesus.